Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, today marks two years since the tragic mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. A Victoria woman is facing charges in two counties in the crossroads. And residents at one apartment in Houston still don't have electricity after last week's deadly storm. It's going to be a very, very, very hot weekend. Uh, the heat index is going to be at about 110. I know you're planning on all kinds of activities and I want you to go forward. Just remember the fluids, uh, the shade, uh, the hat and everything that it takes to beat the heat. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Plus, we highlight the major races we will cover in the May 28th runoff elections next Tuesday. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia has the day off. A Victoria woman pled guilty to felony animal cruelty charges. Thursday, 55-year-old Terry Ellis admitted to letting several cats and dogs in her care die from abuse and neglect. Authorities discovered the animals last December during a welfare check while Ellis was in the hospital. Ellis has been sentenced to eight years of probation and is not allowed to have any involvement with animals. Felony charges against her defendant, Carissa Salinas, are still pending. A 30-year-old woman was arrested by Victoria Police Thursday. Isabel Smith of Victoria faces a charge in Victoria County of burglary of a home. She also faces a charge in Goliad County of bail jumping and failure to appear. Smith is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $40,000 bond. DeWitt County deputies arrested a 55-year-old suspect Thursday. Ronnie Belden of Quero faces eight charges. He is accused of continuous sex abuse of a child under the age of 14, aggravated sexual assault of a child, and indecency with a child, sexual contact. Belden is in the DeWitt County Jail in lieu of $240,000 bond. Two years ago today, 19 fourth graders and two teachers were murdered at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. Today they were remembered in one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. Events in Uvalde today included a bell ringing when bells tolled 21 times to remember the victims. A butterfly release was held at a local church and there was a blood drive in honor of the victims. Community members are set to gather tonight at a vigil to remember those killed. Disaster unemployment assistance is now available in Calhoun County after the storms there May 13th. The Texas Workforce Commission is accepting applications from Calhoun County after it was added to the Presidential Disaster Declaration. Workers who are unable to work due to damage from the severe weather can apply for benefits online through Unemployment Benefit Services or by calling TWC at 800. 939-6631 between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Last week, Calhoun County was hit by an EF1 tornado with maximum sustained winds of 105 miles an hour. Straight line winds around 85 miles an hour hit near Magnolia Beach. Now let's take a first look at your first Warren Storm Team forecast. Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis now joins us with a look at what's going on outside. And uh, Mac, we've got another hot one today. Yes, it's amazing. You know, we, we go from the severe weather now to absolutely nothing. Uh, the weekend is here. I know you've got plans and I want you to have a great weekend. Just know that from the Austin area south, most of Texas is under an excessive heat advisory. And from Austin north, they're under a severe thunderstorm watch uh, for tonight. Now that's probably going to continue to the weekend. Our temperatures are going to be hovering almost at 100 degrees, so we'll be talking more about that coming up a little bit later on. Don, back to you. Mac, thank you. In Houston, crews have restored electricity to 97% of the 900,000 people who lost power a week ago during deadly storms. Still, 3,000 people don't have any power, and they say conditions are getting unhealthy and complicated. It's más caliente adentro que afuera. Moses Lopez says it's so hot inside his Valencia Spring Branch apartment that he and his children have to stay outside, where the near triple-digit heat index feels cooler. Mire, como mucho, mucho mosquito lo come. He says he and his young children are being eaten by mosquitoes. Y estamos esperando la energía, pero no hay cuándo que la energía viene. Lopez and his neighbors say that they've been waiting for a week for management to fix the power after last week's storms. They told us that they gave Centerpoint permission to fix it when this. 
not true. Centerpoint sent us a statement saying, quote, our infrastructure at this location is working appropriately. We can confirm it is the customer's equipment that needs to be repaired at this time, end quote. We think we found the problem, this downed power pole that's yet to be repaired. It's been a struggle. You know, this past seven days, nothing but heatness, our food went to waste. We tried getting property managers to take action, but instead of calling a company to fix the issue, they called 911 on us. Oh, yeah, we're invited guests of these people here. Okay, yeah, so let's go back up to the front and we'll talk about everything over there. With four officers saying that we would be trespassing if we didn't leave, we left to avoid being arrested. Meanwhile, attorneys with Lone Star Legal Aid say tenants should send repair demand letters by certified mail to the landlord explaining their conditions. If a week passes and nothing happens, they can likely sue. Centerpoint Energy says its crews are working around the clock to get everyone back online. But Centerpoint says the remaining outages are likely due to more complicated damage that takes longer to repair. Strong storms moved through parts of Texas on Thursday, causing damage in several areas. Crews reported downed trees and structure damage in Coffee City. Thousands of residents are without power in that area. Several residents were displaced due to the storms. Temporary shelters are set up for those unable to stay in their homes. Search and rescue efforts are underway for anyone trapped in the debris. At least one person was taken to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Two candidates are on the runoff for State Representative District 30. A.J. Louderback has more than 40 years of experience in law enforcement and was elected as Jackson County Sheriff five times. Louderback received endorsements from Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Attorney General Ken Paxton, Land Commissioner Don Buckingham, Ag Commissioner Sid Miller, and former District 30 candidate Vanessa Hicks Calloway. Jeff Buck Knight previously served as mayor of Victoria. He received an endorsement from both Governor Greg Abbott and District 30 State Representative Jeannie Morrison. Buck Knight wants to focus on border security and business and economic development. Two candidates are on the runoff race for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3. Shannon Martin is running for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3. He previously served the Victoria Fire Department for over 35 years. He's active in the community through organizations such as the Victoria Livestock Show and the local Emergency Planning Commission. He won 49 percent of the vote in the March 5th primary. Brad Tucker is running for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3. This position works with the Victoria County Judge and three other precinct commissioners. Together, the commissioner's court handles the financial decisions of the county. A Victoria native, Tucker worked in the construction industry for 25 years and has owned and operated Tucker Construction Company for 19 years. Tucker won 35 percent of the vote in the March 5th primary. In Lavaca County, two candidates are in the runoff for Lavaca County Sheriff. Incumbent Sheriff Micah Harmon spent more than 44 years in public service serving as the Justice of the Peace before he was elected to Lavaca County Sheriff in 2004. Harmon wants to address the cartel issues in Lavaca County that include car thefts and human and drug smuggling and address increasing school safety for Lavaca County schools. Stephen Greenwell is running for Lavaca County Sheriff. Greenwell received 43 percent of the vote in the primary election. Greenwell has more than 25 years of law enforcement experience. He served in positions focused on combating drug trafficking, human trafficking, and other crimes. His main focus is border-related crimes and issues in Lavaca County. Two candidates are vying for the position of county tax assessor in Calhoun County. Azalea Bonus and Tacey Johnson. Bonus received 37 percent of the vote and Johnson received 34 percent of the vote. And two candidates are headed to a runoff in the race for a precinct five constable. Incumbent David Thomas and Chelsea Holt. Thomas received 39 percent of the vote. Holt received 41% of the vote. And here's your viewer poll. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote. The question is, what race are you watching May 28th? 
Calhoun County Constable Precinct 5, Calhoun County Tax Assessor Collector, Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3, Lavaca County Sheriff or State Representative District 30. We want to hear from you. Come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to take part and I will have an update on 25 News Now at 6. Bloomington High School will honor Kevin Garza during its graduation commencement tonight. Garza was supposed to walk the stage with the class of 2024. However, his life was taken from him back in 2016. The 11 year old was making his way to school when a car struck him. His mother will walk the stage and accept what should have been his diploma during the commencement. Kevin Garza was also honored in the school's yearbook. Memorial Day ceremonies in Victoria start next Monday morning. The Victoria County Veterans Council will host a ceremony at 11 a.m. at Deleon Plaza. The Warriors Weekend Field of Honor will host a ceremony next Monday night starting at 715 at the Golden Crescent Gold Star Memorial, 4802 John Stockbauer Drive. The event will include a flag retirement ceremony and a roll call for the 441 area soldiers killed in action. A Memorial Day program will be held at the El Campo American Legion Hall. The program starts Monday morning at 11. The Legion Hall is at 2241 State Highway 71 in El Campo. Next Thursday at 5.30 p.m., Victoria ISD will hold a board meeting to discuss a grievance filed against the former superintendent and board of trustees president. The board meeting will be held inside the administration building boardroom at 102 Profit Drive. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. Three Christian missionaries from Oklahoma-based group were killed in Haiti Thursday night. Straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5, the latest in the surge of violence in the Caribbean island. Also ahead, a council member in North Texas managed to avoid a freak accident by attending a work session early. Here's a look at what you can expect on Community Crossroads. We hear from Republican runoff candidates from Calhoun and Lavaca counties. We also hear from the Salvation Army and the Victoria Republican Women's Club. If you voted in the Republican primary, you can vote in the runoff. If you didn't vote in the Republican primary or the Democrat primary, you can vote in the runoff.
Sixth missionary couple was fatally shot by criminal gang members in Haiti's capital who ambushed them as they left a youth group activity held at a church. A third person was also killed during the attack Thursday evening. The slayings occurred as the capital crumbles under the relentless assault of violent gangs controlling 80 percent of the capital. Authorities are waiting for the arrival of a Kenyan police force as part of a UN-backed deployment aimed at quelling the gang violence. AAA says nearly 44 million travelers are expected to leave town this weekend, but holiday trips can quickly turn tragic if families are not careful around water. It's a preventable tragedy, but it only takes seconds for a person to drown. You're on vacation, you're having fun, and sometimes you drop your guard. Dr. Don Plumley is medical director of pediatric trauma at Orlando Health Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. He says every year when the weather warms up, there's an increase in the number of drownings. Families need to realize who's the high risk people that drown, and that's really the toddlers, that one to four age group that are just wandering around, they get away from you, there's a lot going on. The other group that we've seen a great increase in is special needs children. Plumley says remembering the ABCs of water safety can help. A is for adult supervision. He recommends designating a watcher when children are near water. It's much like picking a designated driver when you go out with your friends, is there's gotta be someone who's not drinking, who's not on their phone, who's paying attention, watching the children and it gets tiresome so have several people take turns doing it b is for barriers look for water safety features around bodies of water especially if you're staying at an unfamiliar place is there a pool fence are there locks on the doors? Are there alarms? Because all those can help prevent a drowning. Finally, C is for classes. Enroll children in survival swim lessons. We don't want people not to go on vacation, not do fun stuff, but just be safe and have a great summer. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In North Texas, one council member avoided a car crashing into his building and driving through his office. McKinney Council member Michael Jones was in a meeting Tuesday afternoon when he received a call that an SUV hit the building he works in, driving through his desk. One bank employee sustained a minor leg injury, but no one else was hurt. Whether it was divine intervention or a twist of fate, Jones has a greater appreciation for his family and his own life. Record rain, a possible record tornado season, and now maybe a record hurricane season, too. This tornado season could be one of the most active in modern history, with more than 800 twisters reported so far this year. Now, NOAA's National Hurricane Center says this could be the worst hurricane season ever. The agency's newly released preseason forecast predicts between 17 and 25 named storms, of which 8 to 13 could become hurricanes. And of course, uh, because we expect a very active storm season, it's uh, incumbent upon everybody that you join us on June the 3rd at 6.30. We are going to be doing a 30-minute special on storm prep for 2024. As uh, Don mentioned, the Hurricane Center is expecting up to 25 named storms. Now, we can't say where they're going to land, but we know with an active uh, storm season like that, we're very vulnerable to get something. Now, we're going to be talking about um, of course, uh, past hurricanes, building codes, what to do with hospital patients, evacuation routes, all kinds of stuff. It's a whole 30 minutes where the entire news department got involved in that and uh, we invite you to join us and that'll be on June 3rd. So we got a little time for that. And coming back in just a moment, we'll be talking about our hot holiday weekend. All that coming up in a moment.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Right about now, people are planning, you know, what they're going to do with the hot dogs. And of course, we have several Memorial Day observations that you want to attend. And so all I'm telling you is that go forward and uh, enjoy. Just consider that the heat will be very strong. Right about now, we're at 91 degrees. The heat index, well, this is what this is how your body is feeling with the combination of heat and humidity is at 103. Now 103 is high, but it's not what we call criteria. 105 is criteria. And then 110 is a whole nother level of, of concern. But even at 103, that's, uh, that's close enough uh, for everybody. So 92 is our high officially. Our record is uh, 98 degrees, but we're going to be creeping up uh, to about upper 90s as we get on into the weekend, so it's going to be only getting hotter. Now, obviously, we had a lot of sun today, still on the hazy side. No stormy weather in uh, South Texas. In fact, it all stops right here in Central Texas at Austin. Uh, you can see how there are some storms up in the Dallas area right now. There's Austin. There's you. Uh, if you happen to be driving, consider that uh, anything north of Austin will probably have severe weather during the afternoon hours. And so the peak heating is, you know, three, four, five o'clock. That's the worst time to be on the roadways because you're going to run into this stuff. So if you go late at night or early in the morning is my two cents of advice on that. The big dome of high pressure is uh, really building. It's going to be a hot, long summer. It, it continues sort of creeping northward, pushing all of the stormy weather up into the into uh, the, the northern plains. So if you remember last summer and who could forget, uh, we're going to be looking at another one like that. So how many days over 100? Probably, I'm going to guess, over 60, which is what we did last year. So uh, that uh, sort of adds on to what we uh, have to deal with. Here's Victoria. Obviously, in the crossroads, nothing happening. But here uh, is the Dallas area, Dallas-Fort Worth. You can see how the big storms just really kick going right at about 2, 3 o'clock. And they're rolling through the area. So anybody driving up in that area of the world is going to be dealing with that stuff in the middle of the day. Severe thunderstorm watches for all of North Texas. And like I said, from Austin South, it's all heat and humidity. So not only including our area, but San Antonio all the way down to the valley, Corpus Christi, Laredo. Yeah, hot and steamy. And of course, this in orange here is an excessive heat advisory. And basically, I'm sorry, excessive heat warning. So with that tells me that the heat index will be over 110. And so again, on the hot side, for anything you have planned outdoors, just don't overdo it in the middle part of the day. Or in more, mornings are good, evenings are good. Uh, the breeze is good. And if you're getting a nice breeze, that, that really helps out. We do have one potential system developing right here. But the good news for us is that it's going to be going up into the Atlantic, not down into the Gulf. So tomorrow, lots of sun up to 91 at the coast. For those of you in Cuero, looking at about a 96. And for the rest of us, we're looking for a hot, sunny weekend. Just keep in mind the heat index is in the peaks in the afternoon hours. And then hopefully next week we'll get out of the deep heat and get a little bit more regular heat. Wouldn't that be exciting? That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have this QR code. Scan that with your phone and put Crossroads Today on your phone. Here's Don. Thank, thank you. And coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, Thursday was a busy day for airports. We have the numbers ahead.
taking a look at your stocks. The Dow up four points, the S&P 500 up 37 points, and the Nasdaq up 185 points. Oil up 85 cents, closing at $77.72 per barrel. Thursday was the second busiest day at airports in the United States ever. The TSA says it screened 2.93 million passengers that day. It ranked second to the Sunday after Thanksgiving last year, which is typically the busiest travel day of each year. TSA said five of its ten busiest days ever were this month, a sign that travel is ramping up headed into the summer rush. They, project, they predicted that today they will see even higher numbers than Thursday. Stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast. Plus, Batman and the Green Lantern visited a children's hospital in Illinois to help clean windows. And now here's a look at what's coming on World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. Night, tornado warnings, record temps, strong thunderstorms from the roads to the sky. What to expect as the holiday weekend kicks off. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. Ouija. <laughs> Batman pulled double duty this weekend at the OSF Children's Hospital of Illinois in Peoria. The Cape Crusader joined forces with Green Lantern to wash windows while simultaneously entertaining children at the hospital. Twice a year, workers from Clearly Windows of Bloomington dress up as superheroes to clean the hospital's windows. The man behind the mask, who is the operations manager, says he loves bringing smiles to the kids' faces. That is really good, and, and they're working. It's not just like, you know, <laughs> That's they're... That's amazing. <laughs> yes, and they're doing all that. And, and they're swinging and dangling from a 10-story building. <laughs> yes, and there's no Batmobile there <laughs> to pick them up. He, he could. That's, oh, no, you wouldn't want that job, would you? I wouldn't, but uh, <laughs> but Batman can do it for sure. Oh, that's for sure. And, and without Robin, no, too. No Robin, but 
He had the Green Lantern. <laughs> hey, folks, uh, just look for a way to stay cool over the weekend. I want you to have a great time, but we are looking at some unreasonably hot temperatures as we start pushing into the upper 90s for Sunday and Monday. Our heat index will feel like 110, so just want you to just respect the heat. That's all I'm saying. Don't, don't just ignore it. Otherwise, with a little luck, we may get out of the blazing ter ter uh, category by next uh, middle of next week. All right. Thank you, Mac, and thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is next.